Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm Casey Panetta, Managing Editor of ECN. In this week's episode, Boeing's newest spaceship, a pocket-sized printer, and a new anti-tank missile launcher. The tense relationship between Russia and the U.S. has highlighted a number of issues within the space program. With recent tweets from Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin stating that Russia won't continue cooperation with the U.S. on the International Space Station after 2020, the issue becomes how will the U.S. and other countries transport astronauts to and from the ISS without Russian spaceships? The lack of transport option also highlights the issue in any future for space tourism. At the end of the day, the U.S. is going to need its own spaceships. A lot of names were thrown out, including SpaceX as the most likely solution, but on June 9th, Boeing unveiled its CST-100 commercial space taxi. The company's main goal is to restart the U.S. ability to get to the ISS and beyond without spending $60 million for a seat on a Russian Soyuz. The company is referring to this capsule as a space taxi due to its simplicity and cost effectiveness. It's basically just designed for ascent and reentry. The capsule is about 14 and a half feet in diameter, includes five recliners, a hatch and windows, a control panel with Samsung tablets equipped with wireless internet, a docking port, and room for about 485 pounds of supplies. The inside LED setup looks a little like the 787 Boeing Dreamliner in tribute to the company. Boeing is hoping the space taxi will be ready as soon as 2017. Corporate road warriors have numerous tools at their disposal, including tablets, portable projectors, the cloud, and micro-sized mice. But this item really takes the cake, because who wants to bother with Bluetooth printers when you can have your own trusty robot sidekick do the printing for you? The Printy Lab is developing a prototype pocket printer that would drive itself around a piece of paper, printing as it travels, and even search for new pieces of paper. The micro-sized device weighs about 10.5 ounces with the approximate dimensions of iPhone 5, and if the team hits their $330,000 goal on Indiegogo, they'll set about finishing their prototype with a general launch scheduled for next year. The P Printy Printer and I do hope they'll come up with a catchier name, would search for the paper's edges using the integrated scanning modules and scroll down and across printing as it goes. The robot printer can print on all standard sized pieces of paper and if more than one page is required, the device asks you to swap out the paper or it can actually search for a fresh sheet. The internal ink cartridges supposedly can last up to 200 pages at a speed of 1.5 pages per minute and a resolution up to 600 dpi, but I would point out that the company hasn't completed the first prototype yet, so all of their claims could be subject to change. A donation of about $300 will get you one of these pocket-sized printers when the device goes to market. With more and more battles being fought in the tight corners of urban arenas, much of the military, both strategy and weapons, have evolved to become effective given the new parameters. The newest weapon to make an appearance, at least for the French Army, is the MMP, which is similar to the American Javelin. It's an anti-tank missile launcher designed to replace the Milan launcher currently being used. The weapon was designed with modern warfare and urban terrain in mind. It's a 33-pound tripod mounted system with a real-time data link that can be fired by dismounted troops, remote turrets, or mounted on a combat vehicle. It's also designed for firing in confined spaces, but offers a 13,000-foot range against hot and cold targets. As an added bonus, the MMP offers high-performance signature reduction in the visual, infrared, and RF domains. It can also lock onto targets using a dual-band visible, uncooled IR seeker, allowing operators a ton of flexibility when it comes to firing and moving position. The French Army is expecting an order of 400 by 2017. That's all for this week's video. Be sure to check in on Facebook and Twitter and check out past episodes at ecnmag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta and this has been your engineering update. It's so cute. Ah. <laughs> Don't you put that in the video.